All right, folks. Um, I put this video together because uh, I got the Ender Extender from Mark, and I was having a problem trying to change my firmware so that the printer recognizes the full size of the bed. So um, first off, I want to mention my disclaimer that this video is just my attempt to help folks modify the 3D printer firmware in order to make personal changes to the firmware. Before you begin, please read these instructions and watch the videos that I've attached here. Um, if you're not comfortable with this process, I suggest you probably don't attempt to do this. Um, this is a use at your own risk and I take no responsibilities for any adverse issues that might arise from following these videos. Um, I also want to make a couple of uh, acknowledgements. One to Sergio Sanchez for without his assistance, I probably couldn't have done this video. And also um, through Teaching Tech and Chris Riley's Chris's Basement, those guys were instrumental in helping me to understand what I needed to do in order to be able to create this video and to update my own firmware. <clears throat> this is one of those stop gaps that I found uh, the information being very vague uh, in this industry and throughout all of these uh, Facebook pages in regards to being able to do this. So this is a beginning to end real time modification of your firmware. So again, this is uh, for, I'm going to do it for the Ender 3 and also using the uh, Big Tree SKR mini boards. So if those configurations fall under what you have, this may help you. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is we need to make sure we have Video Studio installed. So um, the locations for these are going to be in the text, but uh, you just go to Video Studio Code and you go down and pick your computer. I'm going to pick the Windows and download that. So it's going to go ahead and run. And then I'm going to open that up and run this. Just accept all the defaults. You don't need to make any changes to it at all. Just accept the defaults and it will install properly. However, there is a extension that you're going to need to include within the Visual Studio Code. And the way to do that is we're going to go ahead and open it up. And then we're going to go ahead and use this little feature right here, which is extensions. And you're looking for Platformio right here, I-O, I-D-E. Now, if you don't have that installed once you open it up, which you probably won't, I do because I've used this before, um, then there's going to be a little install button underneath it. Go ahead and click that install button and that'll put that extension in for you. I've already got it, so I'm not going to need to do that. All right, so now we got that all set up and that's all running, looking all good. Now what we need to do is go over to GitHub and pick up the files for our board. So again, you're going to go to bit, uh, GitHub and under Big Tree, Big Tree Tech SKR Mini 3, the link is in my document here. Um, this page should come up. Now this is for version 1, version 1.2, and for version 2. So once you get here, you're going to go ahead, click this green code button, and then click the download zip file. And that's going to go ahead and download into your system, I mean, into your downloads and your files. As soon as it's done, I'm going to go to my files under my downloads. There it is right there. I'm just going to go ahead and cut that out of there because I don't want to keep it there. I've done this a few times now. I'm going to drop it in my C drive folder that I've created here. Now, word about this. You want to make sure you put it in a local drive. You do not want to put it in a cloud drive or a drive that is attached to the cloud because it's going to be very difficult to compile that software through the cloud. All right, so once I've got it here, I'm going to extract it into its own folder. And then I'm also going to wait for that to finish. Sorry. It just takes a couple seconds for it to finish. Um, the name, the Big Tree Tech SKR Mini, that's a pretty long name. So we need to kind of shorten that name up. So I'm just going to go ahead and rename that. And I'm just going to call it the BTT. SKR Mini. So you want to shorten it up also. All right. Now we've got everything we need. We're going to go back over here to the studio. And there's multiple ways to bring this file in. I find it easier just to click on File, go down to Open Folder, navigate back to where I just downloaded that. There it is right here. 
and now I'm going to go ahead and open that up, open it up again, and I'm going to go to the firmware. Now here's all those different versions on that uh, Big Tree Tech SKR mini board. You got your version 1, your version 1.2, and your version 2. I believe a many, many people out there are getting this version 2, but I got the version 1.2, so I'm going to click on that and click on my Marlin and open it up. Now it's going to pull it all into my VS Code editor here. And once it's all done, I should have my PIO home up here, which is good. I should see a Platformio INI folder and then all these other folders. We're going to get to this in just a minute, but you can go ahead and click this Marlin and you want to make sure you have your Configuration H. We're going to work in that one and we're going to work in the Platformio INI. We're going to do the Platformio INI first. So we'll click on that. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and make a couple little quick changes here. So right here, where are we at here? Where it says your motor speed, we're going to add a line below that. And I've got it, uh, I've got it in here. We're just going to add this line right here, which is the board type. Let's see if that'll work. go. That's the way it's supposed to look. Blue there and then maple. And then that's around line 45, 46. So the next thing we want to do is we want to add another line. And we're going to go down and make a couple little changes right here. I'm just grabbing that for you. I put its line around 253. And scroll down there. And there's 250. Where are we at here? Here we go. So right here it's a 268. So there's the board type maple, the one we just put in there. And we're going to go ahead and make a little change here. And we're just going to add the at sign, and then we're going to do a less than. Oops, less than. I'm sorry that that's not in there. I'll fix that. And then 6.2.0. And we just need to make that change because I believe that um, they're at uh, 7.0 right now, and if it's not below 7.0 it has a running problem and there's all kinds of technology behind it I don't know I, this just seems to work so make that change and then you're done in the platform INI area so now we're going to go to configuration H and the first thing we want to do is we want to change our bed size so if you hit the control and the F you're going to get this little find here you can also go up to your edit and, and go find there I just control F and I just type in the word size and the first thing we want to do is change our bed size. Our X is 400 on the on the um, Ender extender. Our Y is 400. And if you got the XL, then you need to change the Z to 500. All right, and we'll get that done. <coughs> and the next thing we want to do is we want to come on down here and just kind of take a look. I want to make sure that all this is correct. You want to have the uh, end stops here defined. That's good. But um, we also want to take a look at the end stop pull downs. So these are end stop pull ups, is what I'm looking for. And this may not be an issue in this one. Oh, yeah, I think we're okay. All right. Um, so if you're using the BL Touch, which a lot of folks are, we need to go over and make some edits on the BL Touch as well. So I just type in BLT up here, and not the sandwich type, but the sensor type. And we need to uncomment this app so that it actually activates. When it turns that pinkish purple color there, then we can go ahead and that tells the, uh, the software to, to run this script. All right. So the next thing we need to do is just keep scrolling down. And as we scroll down, we need to get to the nozzle to probe offset. Now, if you've installed your BL Touch on your hot end, you probably use some sort of a mount. You probably got it from Thingiverse. And that Thingiverse uh, STL file will probably have your offsets in it. Um, the one I used actually had an offset of 48. So we want to go ahead and put that in there. And that was for my X and my Y was 10. <clears throat> and then when you get done with this, you're going to have to watch another video that teaches you how to set your Z offset 
for it. And that, again, can be found, uh, I believe Chris's basement does a good one, and Teaching Tech does a good one on that. So I'm just kind of doing the high-level modifications to get you going right now. One of the other things that um, is really pretty important for you to do, because the way that I installed my BL Up Touch is I installed the BL Touch so that it goes into my Z end stop. I don't use a Z end stop anymore because I'm going to use the um, the BL Touch for that. So I need to make sure that number one, my Z Safe Homing is on. So I can go up here and just type in Safe. And we need to get rid of those. So that's commented right there. So Z Safe Homing is on. And we can also take a look at that. And then the other thing is, is we need to set up our um, auto bed leveling. And I'm just going to do this at bilinear. And this is the easiest way to find it is just bilinear. <clears throat> so right now, you know, by default, the mesh bed leveling is commented. So we're going to comment that out. And then I'm going to uncomment this one right here. And now we've got bilinear. And so let's just make sure I got that set. I got my offsets done. My BL touch is engaged. I've got my auto beveling, bed leveling as set to bilinear, which you need for a large bed like the extender. I got my Z safe homing. And um, that's pretty much it. So I've done pretty much everything I need to do right now in order to be able to compile this. So once I'm done, if you look at the bottom of your Visual Studio, you should see this check mark. And this is where everything's going to go. Well, hopefully this will go correct. I'm going to go ahead and push that. And now it's going to run the scripts. Now this could take a couple minutes and I'll just sit here with you. If I get an error, we'll look at what that error is and we'll go back and make that change. But um, I've had some pretty good luck. What this does is this will create the firmware.bin file that you need to save to your SD card. So my suggestion would be is to make sure you have a clean SD card with nothing on it. Um, get it ready in your computer, whatever drive that would be. And when this is all done, all you need to do is copy that file into your SD card. Put your SD card into your printer slot where your um, board is and turn it on. When you turn it on, it'll run that firmware update script. And then when you're all done, I would suggest taking out that card, that little SD card, and put it in a secure place where you won't lose it. So it looks like everything's compiling properly the way we want it to. We may have some success here. All right, well, we should almost be done. There we go. I don't worry about that little one line there. That shouldn't be a problem. As long as we get it complete, we're good. And we have one succeeded. I like to come up here just to say, yep, it's all succeeded. It's good. We're green. Fantastic. All right. So now how do you get to that firmware.bin file? So we could do a couple of different ways here. We go up here to our build. And then we right click right here. And we say reveal in Explorer. OK, so it's going to reveal all the fo folders. And I want to make sure you see this. Under this STM32F etc. <laughs> so right click over that, go over to reveal, it'll open it up, double click on it there, and there is your bin file. That's the one you want. So copy that out and drop it wherever your SD card is. I don't have one set up on mine, but just drop it in there. Once you're done with that, you can close everything out and you are done. So that's about the best that I can help you with. I suggest that you watch that Chris's basement video. Um, the way that he did it is his BL touch was not, uh, his connection was not inserted into the Z end stop. It was inserted into the probe. So um, he has a little bit of a different definition on what's going on there, but just keep that in mind. If you set it up with your, your BL touch into that Z end stop, I just removed my Z end stop altogether. Then the way I just showed you is the way you want to do it. Um, that should get you going. I hope it works out for you and happy printing.